Love and blessings to everybody watching. Another beautiful day here in Belize. I wanted to take a quick moment to uh, basically give thanks to everybody who's been sending me some very, very beautiful messages, some messages of encouragement, um, a lot of inspirational messages, messages of support. Thank you very, very much. I really appreciate it. I'm grateful that I could be of some help uh, in one way or another. Um, I'm happy to give. I get people from all walks of life. I get people who work from all over the place. I get police officers, I get people who work at the airports, at the gas stations, at the hospitals, at the supermarkets, at the banks, uh, security guards. Um, I get people who work from all over the place. And they come to me and ask me uh, for herbs, they come to ask me for cleansing, enrichment, and the main thing is, do you have anything for COVID? Of course, <laughs> I do. And. Um, and these people who work day in, day out, um, these are the people, uh, the portion of society that has to wear this, right? So we're told that we have to wear this for the protection of the people. And I want to share, uh, not what I believe, but what I've learned, right? Simple facts from the body, uh, how the body works. Just like the vehicle, like a car that has to take gas and convert it into energy, the car takes out fumes through the back, right? And that is a waste material. One of the, what the body does is when it takes glucose and converts it into energy using oxygen, the waste material is carbon dioxide. So how the body takes out the waste material is genius, it's very easy. From the cell, it goes out to the blood, that's where the waste material is, and the blood, it takes it to the lungs, and from the lungs, it's very easy to detoxify this waste material. Carbon dioxide is an acid. So, why is this important? Why? Because the acid has to come out because it's in the blood. It doesn't want to get accumulated in the blood. The blood has a certain pH. pH is basically the scale of alkaline versus acid, right? So, what it wants to do, it wants to maintain a pH of alkaline. The blood pH is around 7.35 to 7.45. So what it wants to do is want to maintain at 7.4. That is a healthy blood supply. That's the optimal pH. What we do when we do this, obviously, we're accumulating the carbon dioxide, right? Another interesting thing too is that if you want to look at the lungs, the lungs, the pH of the lungs is also 7.38 to 7.4. So it's the very same thing as the blood. It's very interesting, huh? Now, I want to make a comparison, right? I want to make a quick comparison. Let's say you have a pool, a swimming pool, right? And you want to make sure that the swimming pool is safe to swim in. What you want to do is you want to test the pH. So when you test the pH, what are you looking for? What number, what pH are you looking for? So the optimal pH, if you look at it, you Google it, it's going to be 7.2 to 7.8. But 7.4 and 7.6, that's where you want to see it at, right? If you look at a river and you see a healthy, beautiful river and you test the pH, it's going to probably read 7.4. Interesting, huh? Blood 7.4, lung 7.4, pool 7.4, river 7.4, all slightly pH. So... When we jump into the swimming pool or the river, that is that pH, we're good. You know, we can thrive, we can play, nothing happens to us. But if we start to accumulate acidity, right? Let's say we start to drip in the water, drips and drips of acid. And we do this consistently, day in, day out. And we test the pH later, what we're going to find is that the pH is going to have to drop. Accumulation of acid is going to increase the acidity and bring down the alkalinity, right? So if you do that to a pool or a, or a river, we start to see, let's say a river, things are living in the river, you change the pH, now it's becoming acidic, the life starts to die. Things in the water starts to decay. And so things that start to die, something else starts to eat it up. Now if you notice, if we throw food in the streets, or we throw it in the grass, or we throw it anywhere, Something is going to break it down, something is going to eat it up, something always breaks down things in this world. So in this world, what we have is that in the body, in the river, things start to die, bacteria starts to break it down because bacteria breaks down toxicities and breaks down dead materia. So now let's look at the lungs. We do this, right? And we accumulate the acid in here. 
And we do this consistently, consistently, let's say we do it for hours and hours and hours. We are going to change the pH of the lungs. And when the pH of the lungs starts to change, the cells in the lungs starts to decay, starts to die because of the pH starts to change, it starts to acidify. Now, if things in the lungs starts to die and decay, something is going to have to eat it up. Something is going to have to clean out the dead material because the dead cannot stay in the body. We have a cleanup crew in the body and that's called bacteria. Our bacteria goes and cleans up the area of all the dead thing caused by the acid buildup. Now, this can be misclassified or misdiagnosed if you look at the lungs and you see bacteria all over, you'll say, oh man, bacteria infection, bacteria is causing the problem. When in fact, bacteria is the solution of the problem. Bacteria is cleaning out the area from the dead things, which is being caused by the real problem. Now, if the acid continues to build up in the lungs, it is going to seep because a carbon dioxide, when it mixes with liquid or water in the lungs, it turns into carbonic acid. And this carbonic acid is going to seep into the blood. And the same thing is going to start to happen with the blood. The blood supply is then going to be compromised. The pH is going to drop. It's going to acidify. Body is very smart. Though. The body is a genius. Every time the body is faced with a problem, it tries to find a solution. It tries very, very hard. So one of the solution to uh, preventing the acidifying, the acidifying of the blood is that the body takes calcium, which is highly alkaline, and dumps it into the blood supply. And it dumps it over and over again as long as it is necessary. So if the acid continues to build up in the blood and the body has to throw in calcium in there, the filter of the blood, which is the kidney, is going to filter out the calcium. So we're going to see one of the symptoms of acidity in the blood is going to be calcium buildup. Stones. We're going to see calcium buildup all over the body. Cancer lives in an acidic environment and loves an environment where oxygen does not go in. So depriving lungs, increasing acidity can have a direct effect on cancer. So this is why I'm not fully convinced. I'm not convinced that this can help prevent sickness or it can strengthen the immune system or the health of the body. However, when you look at herbs, now you're talking, now it's a different story. Herbs like Cecropia, you see that? So Cecropia is actually very good for lung health. This does, it helps the lungs to regulate that pH, to take out the acidity much more easier and to increase the health of the lung bacteria and lung cells. Another herb that does that is Tawa Tawa. Now you can look it up, Euphorbia Hirta. In Asia, this is called the asthma plant and this right here is proven to be non-toxic too. It is very good for lung health, very good for blood health because it also regulates blood pressure just like the Cecropia. Guaco vine, also another powerful herb, medicinal plant, which is a female version of country, but guaco vine is also very good for lung health. Guaco vine, you need very little. It is low dosage, and you only need about two, three weeks at a time. You don't need a lot of guaco. It's very powerful stuff. Strongback. Strongback, you can find it almost anywhere in Belize. This is a wild weed, it's considered. This increases the health of the lungs. It also decreases the production of things called spasmogens or histamines. And it does help a lot for back pain. Women who suffer back pain during menstrual cycles uh, or men or anybody who sit for long periods of time and you have back pain, strong back, very good. However, strong back also very good for the lungs. So this is what convinces me far more because there's a lot of evidence on it. So I'm not convinced of this because um, 
because of what I've learned 